Ah oh, man, I just noticed that I've been sliding this thing around too much and now the bottom filter is a little busted. Shoot. In my last video, I mentioned I'd be doing a full system build tutorial once I had all my parts in. Well, here we are. Let's get started. First, I'm going to be making a quick general list of all the parts I'll be using for this build. We have our case, power supply, motherboard, CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage. First, we're going to start off with the motherboard, which comes with the motherboard itself, the user manual, the rear I.O. shield, and the driver disk. If you have any access to the internet, you're probably not going to want to use this driver disk since they usually come with outdated drivers by the time you receive them. And if you don't have internet, how are you watching this video? What I normally do for step one is install the RAM onto the motherboard while it's still outside of the case. Since this motherboard has four DIMM slots, I'm going to refer to the manual to see which ones are going to be occupied first for DIMM 1 and 2. And it looks like the first one will go here and the second one here. So to install it, first we need to open these little latches on both sides or on one side depending on what motherboard you have. Keep in mind that the slots have this little notch to prevent you from putting in the RAM the wrong way since there's a little hole right near the middle of every um, RAM stick. With that in mind, I'm just going to align it with the hole, press down until you hear a click on both sides. If you're a first time builder, this will probably feel like a lot of force, but trust me, you're not going to damage the motherboard if you press down hard. One way to tell that they're fully installed is if you notice that all of the latches are fully aligned. Now that we have the RAM installed, we're going to move on to the CPU, or the processor. My specific processor is a PGA socket one, which means that all the pins are on the processor itself, and the holes are on the motherboard socket. If it was an LGA, the CPU would be flat, and all the pins would be on the motherboard socket instead. You're going to want to be very careful with the PGA CPU because if you bend any of the pins, it's not going to make full contact with the motherboard socket and thus it won't work. So I would recommend that you only hold the edges of the CPU and try not to purposefully touch any of the pins at all. I'm going to set that down for now since I'm only working with one hand. I'm going to open the latch on the socket so that it's ready for us to put it in. You'll notice that on the CPU there is a little triangle in one of the corners and this will let us align it in the right orientation on the socket. On our socket, that same triangle is right here in this corner. So while aligning those corners, I'm going to seat it into the socket until it drops into place. I'm not going to push it down, it'll just fall in like that. Now put the latch down, secure it, and our CPU is now installed. Next we need to install our CPU cooler on top of our processor, but in this situation, my cooler uses a different mounting mechanism than what's currently pre-installed on the motherboard, so I'm going to need to unscrew these brackets here so that I can actually use my cooler. You are going to need a Phillips head screwdriver for this and for a lot of things during this build, so make sure you have one. Basically every cooler that comes with your processor will have this really thin layer of thermal paste already applied onto the, the heatsink, but I'm not going to be using this. I will clean it off and apply my own thermal paste that I like to use, and then I'm going to install the cooler. To do that, first I'm going to be using a dry napkin to get rid of most of the paste. Next I'm going to be using a wet napkin that's covered in rubbing alcohol to get rid of the rest of it. And finally I'm going to rub it down again with a dry napkin, just because. Keep in mind that I'm only doing this because I like to use aftermarket thermal paste on all my builds. You can use the pre-applied thermal paste that was on the cooler and it'll work just fine. Alright, so here's my tube of aftermarket paste that I'll be using. I'm going to be applying a small little circle of paste in the center that's roughly the size as one of these capacitors right here. That looks like a pretty good amount to me. Now I'm going to take my cooler with the shroud logo facing the left side so that it doesn't interfere with my RAM slots. I'm going to align my screws with the mounts as carefully as I can and then just place it on there. This mounting mechanism involves some tension because of these springs here, so it might take some pressure to get these screws started on each of the four points. Off camera, I went ahead and got my screws started, so now I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five on each screw in a cross pattern, little by little, until each of the screws bottom out. One, two, that's bottomed. 
that one is bottomed. Now they're all tight. Now we have to get the fan plugged in, and our motherboard manual says that the CPU fan header is just above the dim slots right there. And that's right here, this white one. This is CPU fan on the motherboard. Now that that's done, it's time to move on to the case. My case came with these accessory bags that have some cable ties for cable management, some uh, rubber grommets for hard drive mounting, and uh, various screws for mounting different things too. And if you remember, our motherboard came with this IO shield, which we'll want to install first before putting anything else into the case. With the main chamber open, I'm going to install my IO shield into the back, right here where the motherboard will go. Be careful whenever you're installing this, because the metal can be kind of sharp, and if you apply too much force, you could actually bend it since it's fairly thin too. All you need to do is apply force on all of the edges, and then you'll hear some clicking, and that's how you know that it's fully in place. My specific case came with this little bit that is used to install these little standoffs for the motherboard. Depending on what case you have, these standoffs might already be installed on the case, but in my situation I needed to install all of them in the right positions. Refer to your manual to see where they go. I actually took that standoff off of its place so that I could show you what that looks like. And that's tight. My motherboard is a micro ATX board that needs 7 screws to fully install into the case, and I already read the case manual to see that these are the correct screws to use. Now I'm going to get my motherboard, holding it from the heatsink, position it into my case, and try my best to align it to the I.O. shield and to all the screw points. It took a little bit of fiddling around, but I finally got it in place. Now time to screw it all in. This will actually be a lot easier if you have a magnetic screwdriver. Alright, last screw. Wrist tight, and it's done. Now that our motherboard is installed, next I'm going to put in the power supply. This specific case came with this weird bracket thing that the power supply mounts to first, and then goes to the back of the case. With every other system that I built though, the power supply mounts directly to the back of the case. I don't know why this is doing this, but I'm just gonna go with it. This is one of those situations where I wish I had a third arm. Alright, now that I have this bracket thing installed, I'm going to put the fan facing downward and position this into the case. Now we're at the back of the case, and I'm going to secure that bracket with these four screws on these four points right here. Wrist tight, and that's done. Now I think I'm going to install the graphics card, but before I do that, I need to remove this little other bracket thing so that I can install the expansion slots in the back of my case. Your case might have a different sort of mechanism for this, but mine is just lifting up and pulling back. We also need to take off a couple of these covers, and I already went ahead and test fitted my GPU, and it looks like it's going to be these two for me. My case is a little bit cheaper, so these ones are the, actually the breakable, disposable ones. I just need to apply force, break it off, and sort of wiggle it, and then it'll just come out. My graphics card has a back plate on it, so I can just touch whatever part I want. But if yours doesn't, you have to be careful not to touch any of the traces that you might be able to see through those holes. I'm going to line up this PCI Express connection onto that first top slot right here. And make sure that this is open before you do that, or else it's not going in. I got my slot pretty much lined up now, so I'm gonna press down until I hear that click. I went ahead and grabbed a couple more screws so that I can secure the GPU to the back of the case right here and right here. But first I have to put this bracket back on. And that's done. If you're keeping track, we now have six of the seven parts incorporated into this build so far. The last one we need is the storage. This is actually going to be mounted on the other side of the case, so I'm going to take off this panel now. I see a couple of different places where the SSD can go, but before we put it in, we have to prepare it for mounting. My case manual specified that I need four of these specific screws and four of these rubber things to secure onto the SSD and then mount onto the case. I have the screws inserted into the rubber spacers, so now I'm going to screw them onto these four mounting holes on each corner of the back of the SSD. It might look weird, but trust me, it'll make sense whenever you put it on the case. I could either mount it into the top or into the bottom with these four little holes right here. I'm going to do it on the top. The rubber spacers are going to be fitting through these larger holes on the right side on all four corners. And then once those are in, you'll slide it to the left and that'll lock it into place. And after doing that, that's not going anywhere. 
So, the good news is that everything is now installed and in the case. The bad news is that we still have to wire everything up, and this is probably going to be the longest part of the build process. First, I'm going to grab all of these cables that are pre-attached to the power supply, and fit them through that hole right there, the big one, to the back of the case. Okay, now we're at the back. This really big cable is the 24-pin cable that goes to the motherboard. I'm going to route this back through to the front, and then secure that to the motherboard on the other side. All right, now we're back at the front. I laid my case down flat onto the floor so that this is easier to clip in. This cable has a little clip on one side, and you'll notice the slot on the motherboard right here has a little lip on the end, and that lets you know that that's the correct orientation to socket this in. So I'm going to align it and clip it down until I hear a click. Don't be too afraid to apply a lot of force here. The motherboard can bend without breaking. It was a pretty faint click that I heard, and I did use quite a bit of force, but now that cable is secured. I ended up removing my top fans for this next step because it was interfering with the CPU power cable that I'm going to be routing to the front now. So I'm going to grab this cable, move it over to the top corner through this little hole, and then hopefully make it through the- oh, I just did it. To the front of the case. Alright, so we're back at the front again, and like the other cable, this cable has another set of clips that secures it to this socket right here. And I'm going to align it and press it down until I hear a click again. After some fiddling around, I finally got it in. Now we're at the back again, and this cable here is actually the power that goes to our SSD. This connector has an L shape on it that prevents you from plugging it in the wrong way. And there it is installed. The last thing that we need to supply power to is the graphics card. You'll notice that all of our cables that are coming out of the power supply are already being used, but there's these little slots here because this is a semi-modular power supply. What that means is that you're able to attach or detach the extra cables that you need or don't need in order to make uh, cable management a lot more tidy. So I plugged in that PCI Express power cable into the correct slot, routed it out the back, up through this hole, and now to the front for a little bit tidier cable management. And now our graphics card has some power to it. I guess now's a good time to get my fans back on on the top. Okay, now those are back on. Now that everything has power, the last thing I gotta do is work on the fans and the front I.O. cables. I originally had this front I.O. thing mounted on the top of the case, and it came with it on this side. I might need to move it back because these cables are not that long and I want to be able to route this cleanly. Ah oh, man, I just noticed that I've been sliding this thing around too much and now the bottom filter is a little busted. Well, I'll just clean out the power supply more often and just ditch this. So off camera, I went ahead and moved that from that position to this position. And I also got the USB 3.0 cable, routed it through the back, through that hole, back around the front through this hole, and now it's in its actual spot. Refer to your motherboard manual to see where all these cables go on your motherboard. All right, now I have the front panel audio cable and I'm gonna do the same thing, route it through the back, Brought it back through the front and then put it to its actual spot somewhere down in there. I actually decided to remove my graphics card so that this is much, much easier to do. Okay, now my front audio is in, USB 3 is in. The last ones I need to install are these really annoying cables for the power switch, the power LED, hard drive activity, and the reset switch. I'm actually really glad now that I decided to take out the graphics card for this. I needed to use a flashlight for this, but there they all are installed. There's like little labels on the bottom of the header that let me know which ones go into which spots. When it comes to the switches like power and reset, positive and negative do not matter, but for the LEDs, positive and negative do matter. So make sure that you get those in the right positions for the lights to work. And now I got my graphics card back into place. The last thing I gotta do is connect all of my fans to the motherboard and to clean up all the messy cables that I have in the back of the case. Now I have it plugged in and it is leading out towards the back through that small hole. Now at the back, here are my three fan cables, one, two, three, and those are my splitter headers, so I'm going to plug one of my 120s into one of the headers, the other 120 into the other header of the splitter, and then the 140 is going to plug into the extender of one of the 120s. Now after plugging all of those in, I have them all tucked nice and tidy into this little lip, out of sight and out of mind. Honestly, I don't think this needs to be cleaned up any more than it already looks. It's not really worth it to put any more cable ties or anything to, to secure them. Since there's so much cable management space back here, the panel's going to close just fine, so I think I am finally done. Alright, now I got the panels back on, dust filters are back on, 
All I have to do is take it to my desk, plug in the power cable, plug in all my peripherals, and see if it actually turns on. But first, make sure your power supply is turned on. So while I was carrying it to my desk, I realized I forgot to plug in the SATA data cable that goes from the motherboard to my hard drive so that it can communicate with everything else. That's better. Okay, I have everything plugged in, my power, my display, my peripherals, and my Wi-Fi. Monitor's on, everything's on. I'm kind of scared because I did not test this before I started assembling everything, which I should do. It's a better practice to do that to see if there's any dead parts, but I was too eager to get this build done. Three, two, one. We got lights. We got fans spinning. Let's see if we get a display. Ah. Oh yeah. We are up and running. Since we have no operating system installed on this, this is the message that we're getting, but everything is working for sure. If it wasn't working, I would have a blank screen and a really sad feeling in my heart. If you'd like to see me make a tutorial about installing operating systems on newly built computers, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Keep following Studio 128 and Wilcox Theater Notch for more content, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, I'm glad that's done. Oh.